Okay, so welcome to room 50. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate how to carry out the specific heat capacity experiment. So how to determine the specific heat capacity of this aluminium block here. Now, uh, I'm telling you that the aluminium block is one kilogram. Of course, you can confirm that by using a weighing scale and checking the mass yourself if you wanted to. But they are all one kilogram. Um, what you're going to need is a power pack a voltmeter, an ammeter, a stopwatch, a thermometer, and five wires. Now, the colors of the wire do not matter. That's just a plastic coating to insulate you from the electric current flow and the copper wire inside. The, the wires is what will conduct the electricity. So that's what you need as a basic setup. Uh, so again, you need the aluminium block, this heater. Now guys, with this heater, just separate it to the left and the right, the wires. Uh, that's just to, so that the setup is nice and neat. So the left uh, hand wire will be on the left hand side, the right will be on the right hand side. So you need the block, the heater, a power pack, voltmeter, ammeter, thermometer, stopwatch, and five uh, wires. I'm gonna pause it, set it up, and show you how it looks once you set it up properly. Okay, so once you're done, this is what the setup will look like. As you can see, I've moved the left-hand wire to the left-hand side and the right-hand wire to the right-hand side from the heater. That's just so that everything is neat. And this is a series circuit. Uh, so we've got the wire from the heater going into the power pack, one from the power pack going to the ammeter, which has a label A, and from the ammeter, we go back to the heater. This is a series circuit and everything's going round in a circle, just like Ringa Ringa Roses. So um, next we need to connect the voltmeter. So I'm gonna connect the voltmeter up and show you how it's done. So I've just added the voltmeter to the circuit and the voltmeter is parallel to the heater. So if you look here, I've placed the clip from the voltmeter and it's going through into that hole which connects to the heater same with the other side um, there's the wire it's going back into the voltmeter and so what you need to remember is that the voltmeter with a V is connected parallel to the heater and the ammeter is in series with everything else Okay, so what you're going to do then, once you've done that, is uh, you're going to have placed your thermometer in already, and so that should have given it enough time to uh, just equilibrialize so that the temperature is kind of fixed and so it's at a stable temperature. And what you're going to do is you're going to read off the temperature. That would be your initial temperature. Okay, so once you've got that as your initial temperature, uh, you're going to record that initial temperature in a table. We'll talk about the table a bit later. Switch on your power pack. As soon as you switch on your power pack, you're going to start your stopwatch. So as soon as you switch that on, you start your stopwatch. So um, what will happen then is you'll have an ammeter reading for your current and your voltmeter reading for your potential difference. Make a note of that as well. And what you're waiting for the thing that you are timing is for the thermometer to go up by 10 degrees. So if I've started at, if I look here, I'm starting at 23 degrees, I will stop the time once it gets to 33 degrees, because that's 10 degree difference. Once there's that 10 degree difference, you stop your stopwatch, uh, you switch your power pack off, and you make a note of the final temperature and the time. But the time must be in seconds. Okay, that's it. Um, but the time will need to be in seconds. So, then what you're going to do is you're going to use a series of equations. Okay, so we're going to need to use, to work out specific heat capacity, which is the C here, uh, we're going to need to use this equation. Energy is equal to mass times... So we need to use this equation, energy equals mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature. Uh, the short way of writing that is E equals mc delta T. 
If you're my student, you know MC delta T is who I am. Can you feel my energy? So E equals MC delta T. Um, the units for energy is measured in joules, mass in kilograms, uh, specific capacity in joule per kilogram degree Celsius, and temperature in degrees Celsius. So it's E equals MC delta T. However, there's a problem. From this experiment, we do not know what E is. We just don't know. Right, we know what the mass is because that's one kilogram. Right, from the aluminium block, uh, we don't know what C is because that's what we're working out. This is the whole point of this experiment is to work out the specific heat capacity. And if you've done the experiment the way I've explained, you will have a change in temperature of 10 degrees. Now you can have more than 10 degrees, less than 10 degrees. That doesn't really matter so long as you calculate your change in temperature properly. Now here's the problem though. We need to work out E from the experiment. So how do we do that? We do that using another equation, which is energy is equal to voltage times current times time. So E equals V times I, which is current, times time. But the time needs to be in seconds, so that's really important. Current is measured in amps. We get that from the ammeter. And voltage is measured in volts. And energy, all energy is measured in joules. So we can, once you put in your volts, let's say I'm making these numbers up, let's say this was 10 volts, and we multiply this by, let's say, 3 amps. I'm making these numbers up. And let's say the time was 1 minute 20 seconds. But we need this in seconds. So what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to times this by 60 to get it into seconds. So that's 60 seconds plus... So let me put S there, plus your 20 seconds, which equals 80 seconds in total. So I'm going to times that by 80 seconds. So our total energy is 800 times 3, which is 8, 16, 24, 200, 2,400 joules. 2400 joules um, so now now that we've worked out our energy we can go back to this equation do we know our e yes we do so i'm gonna that's no longer an unknown we know e we know m we don't know c and we waited for our delta t to go up by 10 degrees so what we're going to do now is we're going to use rearrange this equation to work out specific heat capacity Okay, so what we've got here is um, we, got, we have to use our equation again to work out C, which is specific heat capacity. Our equation was E equals M times C times delta T. So we're going to put that into a triangle where E is at the top. And this is M. This line means times C times change in temperature. So what we've got, to rearrange that, you cover this letter up and then you read the equation. So let me just cover this up. I'm going to shade it. Right, so pretend that's covered up. So it's E, energy, divided by mass, multiplied by the change in temperature. And that bottom bit needs to be in brackets because of your bid mass, bod mass rules, whatever they call it nowadays. So, like I said, guys, these numbers are made up. and so I'm, But I just want to show you how to do it. So once I've rearranged my equation to C equals E divided by M times change in temperature, we're going to have 2,400 divided by 1 times our change was 10. Uh, which will give you an answer of 240 joules per kilogram degree Celsius and that is our specific heat capacity and that will conclude your experiment however what you need to do then is we're going to repeat the whole experiment with a difference I'm going to tell you what that difference is so the next part of this experiment that you're going to do everything is exactly the same the math everything except that we now have an insulating jacket on our aluminium block. So the question you need to think about is do you think there will be more energy required to heat up this block or less energy required? That's the kind of question you need to think about. Next one I'm gonna look at is what the results table might look like. So here's a rough sketch of the table and what it might look like. So I've got the mass of the block which is measured in kilograms, voltage, which is measured in volts, current in amps, 
I'd record the raw time in minutes and seconds and then convert it to seconds uh, here. Uh, then I'd calculate the energy using voltage times current times time. And I'd do it for two sections. Number one, without the insulating jacket. And number two, with the insulating jacket. So you will write, have to write that in full sentences, obviously. And that will help you collect your results. And then you'll need to analyse your data and compare it to the real value for the specific heat capacity of aluminium and see perhaps why your results are not in line with the expected results. And it's okay to be wrong, but the question is, how wrong are you?